Um, unfortunately, Lucy May Schofield can't be here today, so I am reading it, uh, reading her uh, uh, paper for her. Um, so uh, the paper is called The Moon and the Sledgehammer, a dialogue in print uh, of Lucy May Schofield. And you can see her work, the actual work from this, uh, uh, regarding this paper in the exhibition. Um, so it's about a collaboration she did. Oops, sorry. Oh, yeah. um, during late spring of 2015, while the sakura trees still clung to their final cherry blossom petals, I travelled to Fujikawa Uchiko to attend the Mi Lab basic training program. Until then, my only experience of woodblock carving was making a New Year's card an image of Mount Fuji depicted as an English Christmas pudding, while wrapped up under a katatsu in Kyushu, where I've been living for the past year. The five intensive weeks at Milab changed my approach to printmaking forever. During the residency, artists from Canada, Ireland, Malaysia, Chile, and Switzerland studied together. With eight languages spoken amongst us, we found various ways to communicate with teaching French, English, Spanish, Japanese and even mine, when nothing else worked. The lab was not only <clears throat> an immersive environment to study Mokohanga, but also a space to exchange printmaking techniques across cultures. Long conversations developed over the weeks through cooking and eating together, and friendships were forged that will remain forever. Milab is a place that encourages experimentation. In learning the techniques employed by master carvers and expert printers, I felt free to adapt and interpret <coughs> what I was learning into my own practice. I was inspired by the various approaches of the other artists alongside the visiting teachers. With little distraction and long studio days stretched out ahead of us, we soon developed a daily rhythm. We lost track of the days, weekdays merged into weekends, April into May. The satisfaction of the day's carving was evident in the sigh our bodies made when we sat down for dinner together, or in the sound of a cold beer being opened and kampai resounding throughout the house. After our evening meal, we could be found applying camphor oil heat patches to each other's sore shoulders, lower backs and wrists, or monitoring the development of newly formed hand calluses. My hands, fluent in bookbinding, were beginning to learn a new language. The intimacy of the residency program created an open environment, welcoming of questions, further explanations, and repeated demonstrations. Our many visiting sensei were patient, generous, and approachable. We were invited to observe them working on their own woodblocks, to learn directly from watching them create. Each of our teachers had a different methodology in their printmaking and teaching practice. By, be by being granted the time and space for self-directed study, we could learn in the doing of the process and not simply in the watching. Through persistence and practice, I gradually fell into the natural flow imposed by the techniques. The process required me to slow down. It was clear that even if I was in a hurry to complete something, the task would not allow me to hurry. In my gradual understanding of the process, I became more drawn to its allure. I slowly, quietly, calmly, and completely fell it was while cooking and carving that I developed a connection with Guillaume Brisson Darvo, a French Canadian artist from Montreal. He has the most infectious and wonderful laugh, as well as a very unique approach to Mokohanga. As a sculptor and printmaker, uh, Guillaume's prints were playfully three dimensional, creating images printed with mica and sculpting them to form glistening rocks he then placed in the residency garden. Throughout the residency, we cooked together, exchanging French, Japanese, Canadian, and English recipes. We also ran to the Kabaguchi Lake together most mornings, each finding a daily rhythm together. We began to create a space for collaboration and exchange through learning from one another. One year later, in the following spring, Guillaume and I explored the collaborative potential we had developed at Milab further in California. 
we traveled to Berkeley, San Francisco, for a two-month joint printmaking residency at Carla Art Institute. Carla welcomes artists and residents from all over the world as a studio dedicated to printmaking. Our proposal was to create a new body of prints as a dialogue between us, as individuals, as artists, and between our practices. Meaning was sometimes lost in the misinterpretations of the French and English language. In creating prints together, we hoped that cross-cultural dialogues could occur. We were interested in exploring ways that narrative is created, connections are made, and memory is maintained. But if you just came in, Lucy May Schofield couldn't uh, couldn't make it, so I'm just reading. We were both nervous. We were used to working very differently in terms of scale and production in our independent studios. Yet there were similarities in us each being drawn to Mokahanga and having a playful approach to our practices. We had never worked together before and I wondered how we would navigate this collaboration in an unfamiliar studio in a new city to us both. We spent a few weeks dancing around each other, too nervous or shy to take the lead testing ideas that we wanted the other to approve or, or be pleased by. We both tried hard to connect with the other's working methodology and visual language, arguably compromising our own voice and voices in order to find a connection point. Perhaps we were afraid of the collaborative process not working. We were trying too hard to satisfy the aesthetic of the other. Two weeks into the residency, we were both frustrated and confused and had lost sight of what we wanted to do. We confronted one another and after a heated discussion decided to begin again. This time we put a framework in place. We established some limitations. We needed to work alone to find our voices. We decided to create ten prints in an edition of eight to the same dimension using any print process available to us. We had four weeks to work on them. After that time, we would exchange our series of prints in order to respond to the others, forming a conversation between us. We took tentative steps towards a conversation about colour by agreeing to choose a palette together. We each had a somewhat limited use of colour in our previous work so we took a long walk around Berkeley to discuss the personal associations we had regarding colours. The array of speedball and jacquard screen printing inks available in the US was huge, as well as the generously large tubes of whole vine watercolours. We talked about our love for the colours of desert sunsets, the Californian heat, the sand dunes and salt flats of Death Valley and the colours of our dreams. We chose a selection of pinks, fluorescent reds, golds, coppers, pearls and velvety blacks. This step forward allowed us to start our dialogue together about our conceptual and visual expectations of the collaboration. Guillaume got to work silkscreen printing cutouts he had created and I experimented with water-based suminogashi and marbling techniques. As we both began to find a way of working together efficiently in Carla's studio, early prints began to emerge. With each week into the residency, we became more a part of the community of local and international artists, working alongside Japanese, German, Chinese and English printmakers. I have always found printmakers to be amongst the most generous artists. Perhaps due to the type of equipment needed to make prints, artists are used to working outside their studios in shared communal spaces, where being aware of others working around you is paramount to creating a happy, workable space. Carla became a home from home, just as me that had. We knew we would be short of time to get all of the prints completed by the end of our time in Carla, so we worked late into the night and in the sunlit back garden of the house where we were staying. We didn't want to rush the process, but it was important we each had ample time to respond to the other's prints. Each print needed to be left the space for the other artist's response to create the print dialogue we desired. 
But in the collaboration, I was able to free myself up from the usual constraints I place on myself, like having a clear idea of the finished print before I begin. I drew directly onto plywood, carved and printed the image, but then had the freedom to experiment with the image by cutting, deconstructing, rearranging, and collaging. This technique suited the way I make images much more than planning each stage of the print, as I'd previously done with Mokohanga. It allowed flexibility towards making decisions based on what worked or didn't work together. Some of the prints I discarded in the first two weeks of the collaboration, I kept aside, not ruling them out completely, and with the possibility of reworking them later on. It was exciting to see the prints take shape. The inks we had selected became the unifying element. Our deferring sensibilities were reflected in the forms we'd each created, yet as a whole, it felt as though we were creating a language together. We created space in each print to reflect, consider, and create a dialogue as part of the exchange. As the weather, <clears throat> as the weather warmed up and the light in the studio grew longer, so did our hours spent printing. Six weeks into the residency, we each felt ready to set up a space in the studio to lay out our prints for the exchange. By this time, we had nurtured a sense of trust, secure in the knowledge we would respond to each of the prints in whichever way we felt we needed to, and with that, in our own individual sense of authorship would dissolve. As soon as we exchanged our prints, I felt comfortable about responding to Guillaume's work the prints were open, leaving space for me to answer. We each adopted a different approach to creating our individual responses. Guillaume took a photograph of the collection of my ten prints and used Photoshop to explore color, form, shapes, and scale in order to plan his responses carefully. I took a more physical approach, using paper cutouts and samples of watercolors on washi to gauge my responses playing with form, shape, and composition, switching, discarding, and manipulating each added element before committing to an idea. There were a few prints that I found difficult to respond to because they already seemed so complete as prints. I delayed making decisions about these few and focused on what felt instructive. Sorry, uh, sorry to, to interrupt. Can you go back? Uh, um, do you happen to know... No, oh, sorry, the, the last one, previous. No. The one that you just yeah, this one. Oh, yeah. Do you know which who's Oh yeah, which side is here and which yeah. side is yeah. it doesn't matter in a way. Oh uh, no, that's oh, really... it's just it's, it doesn't really matter. It does. Well <laughs> 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 Well no, no, no. So we can all guess. Yeah. It's interesting. There's, well, a, there's a kind of similar huge similarity actually. Yeah. I think it's the one, isn't it? Does anybody know? Anybody you at Carla at the same time? No, but in the, oh, in the picture of which is carving, carving the ladder. The ladder. Yeah. 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 So the ladder. Oh, yes, she has and a silver screen. Oh, she so has, has, has a bit more silver screen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, the ones on the right look a little bit more sculptural. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Be fun when she watches the videos. Eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. So where where we on that one? Yeah. Okay. The combination of silk screen and mokuhanga created texture and depth, a perspective that held the eye. The conversation we were having in print was cyclical repetitions of balance and instability, solidity and vulnerability. Whispers and shouts, caresses and punches of colour re-emerging. As the collaboration progressed, we both talked about the development of our responses. On several occasions, we both felt frustrated that the idea we had wasn't working in print. At these times, we talked it through, eager to glean the other's expertise in how we could make adjustments or alter our response altogether to find resolve in the image. Yet we were mindful to consider just the aesthetic elements, while our silent conversation remained in print. With the final week of our residency upon us, we both felt 
We both individually and method methodically responded to the final prints in the collaboration, each of us having left the most challenging contributions to the last few days, leaving as much time as possible to let the right response surface. As Guillaume continued to print, I turned my attentions to adopting the technique to get the finished prints to dry flat at Carla. Because the nature of the prints were a combination of silkscreen printed acrylic ink on cotton brown paper alongside collage, kozo and gambi washi with nori paste, the base paper reacted to the moisture by cocking and warping badly. We were desperate that this reaction didn't detract from the finished prints so spent days exploring options of how to get them flat. I sprayed the reverse of each print with a light mist of water and placing them on a bed of corrugated cardboard sandwiched between acid freeboard and newsprint. The sophisticated drying system at Carla meant that the 160 finished prints were dried slowly with an electric blower gently distributing air into a cloth bag and down channels over a period of days. The prints emerged flat, but due to the sheer amount of prints in the edition, the process took seven days to complete. The final days at Carla were full of productivity and decision making. We edited the series of 20 prints to 18, highlighting a narrative arch within the selection, at last seeing each other's responses and connections to each print. Together, we reworked the ordering as if numbering pages in a book. We signed and numbered them with phases 1 to 15, inspired by our, by our common moon, the same moon wherever you are in the world. We named the series The Moon and the Sledgehammer. We see them as a visual and emotional correspondence between us as artists. This dialogue was motivated by the desire to know more about one another and feeds from the experience of the present. From these playful exchanges, a new vocabulary arises, specific to the meeting of two universes conversing to create one. This dialogue implies a particular attention to the other's sensibility, whilst inviting us to redefine our own. The 15 phases of prints explore the idea of what collaboration means to us as artists and how the two versatile print mediums of silkscreen and mokohanka form a bridge between our independent practices, as well as challenging our perceptions of their limitations. This collaboration has provided me with an insight into the way another artist generates ideas and produces work, which has been a vital time for me, cementing a new direction in my practice, one of collaboration and creating a dialogue through print. Over the course of working together, I felt inspired and energized by this new approach to collaboration. I hope in the coming years, I will go on to nurture new relationships with artists in the international print community to create more work in this way. In creating a space for making, cultural boundaries are blurred and connections fostered. The sharing of stories, conversation, language and memory through both oral and making traditions can be a tool for communication and connectivity. Print mediums like Mokohanga and places like Milan are incubations for this type of collaboration and <coughs> connectivity to be nurtured. That's the end. Did they actually work on the same um, work or they separate works just side by side? That's why I wasn't. Oh, uh, no, I think they, um, I suspect, yes, I think, for example, now we know a little bit more. I think this would be the Mocha Hand element and that would be the silk screen. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know more about this, uh, this portfolio? Yeah, uh, just from the one in the show. Oh, right. Yeah, you can yeah. see the two. Yeah, so it's yeah. probably worth having a look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Inspiring, I'm recording questions for her, so yeah. um, if anybody has questions that can't be answered and you're interested in knowing the answers, I can yeah. give me your email address and I'll send them to you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you. You have got such a pleasing voice, really. <laughs> <laughs> Love to have you reading my bedside uh, some stories. <laughs> 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 Ralph, <laughs> 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 well, sounds like you're doing bedtime stories tonight. <laughs> We don't no, see you. We <laughs> don't know what's happened if we don't see you. But aside from your lovely voice, I think mm. it's mm. also a wonderful project. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's wonderful. I heard this in the next bit. It was interesting to, to hear a little bit more about it. I think it's a pity probably because, you know, the process was so intense in terms of um, presenting it. Here, yeah. um, uh, I would have liked to see more images of, of the process, but I think, yes. I think that if you're so involved, that's probably quite hard to do. You know, mm -hmm. you have to work out what you're doing and and and, and recording and stuff. So. That's right. Has anybody here done a collaboration mm -hmm. in a similar way? Yes, yes. For example, here, so of course, because you're working mm -hmm. your, with wood and paper. Uh, yeah. Do you actually, three, the three of you print together on the same piece of paper? We don't, but I've done other collaborations actually at um, France Montreal with two other people where we actually worked on, on the same piece of paper drawing and printing, would you passing say, it over. Right. Would, you, would you say that some of the things that she mentioned were pertinent to what you did? Yeah, I think there's a lot of... Um, of negotiations and I mean I missed the beginning part I came in a little bit late but there was a lot of conversations I think half of the time you're talking um, and because you can't actually be working in the same space all the time so you're, you're talking a lot and then kind of picking the work and then doing something to it and then bringing it back and then talking again. Mm -hmm. and I, I remember that that was a lot of um, big part of the process and kind of big, for me it was just letting go <laughs> yeah. and letting yeah. the other person invade my okay. work yes. space and kind of also the harder thing for me was to um, give myself permission to actually do something on top or erase or you know invade there work in some ways, which was difficult at first, but I think there's, we kind of eventually developed a degree of trust, and I, it took about a week at least to kind of get to that point of working every day. I think it was interesting because uh, although she worked quite alongside him in uh, Kaluguchiko, but they had that two weeks where they, they kind of mistimed and uh, didn't get it right, I thought mm -hmm. that was interesting. Mm -hmm. you, there would be a temptation perhaps to rush into it mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. if you weren't confident you might never say anything and then uh, it would be the, the whole process would be quite mm -hmm. disturbing mm -hmm. so you'd have to be as you say trust mm -hmm. and um, just one question about the earlier work that you were sculptural stones the fascinating yeah. stones with the mica yeah. um, do you know what material he carved those little Facets, those facet forms. Uh, yes, is that? No, that, that might be another question, which uh, maybe we can go back to uh, Lucy. Yeah. And, and even Guillaume, actually, is he, is he answering this question? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was interested about that. Yeah, it's a nice yeah, concept. Yeah, that's right, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
that are quite interesting in relationship to Paul's work as well, kind of wrapping forms, prints around forms, I thought. I would imagine they are they are just paper, which is hey, so what I do like. into that shape. With mica paper. dust mm -hmm. on top to look like a rock. But so it, might be those. it does seem to relate to the shape that's immediately in front of them, doesn't it? That shape well, looks yes. as though it could be cut out and yes. assembled yes. into yes. a three dimensional shape. Yeah. That's what I thought. It's yeah. nice just to see the, 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 the two dimensional and the three dimensional installations. And this yoga posture there, so he's standing on his <laughs> <laughs> have a connection. <laughs> you have to laugh. It's in printing position. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stand here on the top of the head and <laughs> that's a natural press. It's very impressive. <laughs> natural <laughs> press. Because <laughs> <laughs> lots of ovals. Stamping the <laughs> ovals. <laughs> That we could, yeah. we could have that as an event or, or happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll stop there and lecture you need to set up. Oh, yes.